This is a beginner's tutorial for using the text tool inside of Inkscape. Inkscape is a free software that you can download on Inkscape.org and I'm going to link that for you below so you know exactly where to go. In this lesson, we're going to start talking more about text, how to put text on your canvas, how to begin to edit text, and in the upcoming video, I'm also going to talk to you about installing your own fonts and give you some resources where you can find both free and paid fonts. So let's go ahead and get started with learning how to add text to our canvas. So anytime you want to add some text, you're going to come over here to your left hand side where you see the big A. And if you click on that, then you will see a little A sort of attached to your cursor and you can click anywhere on your canvas and a blinking cursor will appear for you to be able to start typing out your text. The keyboard shorthand to getting the cursor to appear anytime is just the letter T. So if I'm um, using my regular selection tool with my mouse here and I want to get it to text like in one click, then you can just hit T and, on your keyboard and it will automatically go to that cursor when you click on your screen. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so we are a lot closer. And I'm just going to type out we are learning about text. All right, so when you type your font out for the first time, it's probably gonna look different. It's probably not gonna be this font because this is a font I have installed on my computer and it's just defaulting to this. You're just gonna look different, but that's okay. You can still just type out a sample piece of text on your canvas here. So the first thing I wanna talk about is that anytime you have that A button selected and you have that little A that's attached to your cursor as you move around your screen, you'll be able to come over the text and you'll be able to click inside the text box and you can edit your text. So if you misspelled a word and you need to put your cursor back in there to go in and correct it, or you want to create a line break by hitting enter, or if you don't want the line break and you wanna, you know, hit the backspace button on your keyboard, you can go back and forth just like you would if you were typing in a Word document or in an email or anything like that. It works very similar. Up here we have our edit bar for our text and fonts. So this is where we can do some of the basic things that we will always set up first. You'll type out something on your screen and then the first option here on the far top left is your font selection. I have lots and lots of different fonts that I've already installed on my computer, so yours is not gonna look anything like mine. You're just gonna have some very basic system fonts in there, um, like Times New Roman and um, Arial font and those kind of fonts. So you'll have some very basic ones. In the next video, we are gonna talk about installing your own fonts. So that's where it gets really fun because you can find some really pretty fonts that represent what you like and your personality. And you can put them here in Inkscape and then begin to play with them. So this is the drop down tool that you will use anytime you're looking for a font. You can highlight this and you can type in the name of the font. So if there's one you like to refer to a lot, um, you can type that in and then just hit enter and it will change your current text on the screen to that font. Let me pick one that's a little bit different. All right, so I wanna show you something here because some beginners get confused by this. You'll notice here like on my W and on my G that the font is sort of cut off don't get thrown off by that. It's actually there. It's just not showing up. And I'm going to show you how to make sure it shows up in just a few minutes when we talk about something else. But I just want you to be aware that don't get hung up on that because it's not a problem. So first thing we talked about where you can find your fonts. Second thing over here is your um, font style. So this is going to be something that, quite frankly, I don't use this a lot. This is for like if you want to have bold or normal fonts or italic. The thing is, is when you go to install all these pretty fonts that you'll want to add um, to Inkscape to be able to create some really special looking projects, most of the time those font files that you download, they just come in normal. It doesn't have an italic option, it doesn't have a bold option. Occasionally you will get some that do have those options, but more than times than not, you will actually get, you will actually find the bold option as a duplication here in the font drop down menu and it won't actually appear over here. Let me give you an example of what that means. If I were to type in one of my fonts that I have is a Ray Dunn font. So see here where it says Ray Dunn regular and then it also says Ray Dunn bold. 
So more times than not, when you're downloading your own fonts, it's actually going to be a bold and a regular font. If that font includes it, it may not include it. Um, so this drop down here, I hardly ever use it. Um, I can think of one time in seven years that I've used it. So you don't really need to be too concerned with it. The next option over here is the size of our font. You can absolutely, if you have a particular size in mind that you're trying to, um, a size of text you're trying to create for a certain project, this can be helpful to put that size of font in here. However, generally I find scaling it on the canvas, which I will get to in a moment, is what most of us are comfortable with and what most of us will probably end up doing. The next option over here is your spacing between the lines. So how much space is between lines? If you don't have more than one line, then it's not going to be applicable to your project. I have two lines on my screen right now. We are learning. And then the second line is about text. So if I want there to be more space here, I could either use the plus or minus buttons or I could type in an exact amount and I could increase the space or decrease the space between these lines of text on my screen. Next up, we have your um, text alignment. So do you want it centered? Do you want it to the left or to the right? Generally, I will put mine centered, um, but that is really up to your preference and what type of project you're gonna be working on. But that is where you adjust that alignment right there. As far as just getting your initial text on your screen, it's just clicking that that text button or T on your keyboard, typing it out, selecting your font, adjusting your size and lines if you need to, and you've got your initial text part down. Anytime that you want to get the text box to go away and you want to go back to your normal cursor, you just come over here to the top with that selection tool and you're back to your regular mouse. Now when you go back to your regular mouse, you'll notice that the box changes. It is no longer a type box. It is back to our um, bound box with the little arrows that go around it so we can scale this text up or down. When you're on your normal selection mouse tool here, it will behave, your text will behave the same way as any other image has so far. So if you grab one of these arrows and you begin to scale up or down, you'll be able to shrink your text up or down. Your uh, size of your text on your screen will be reflected here in that um, width and height that we talked about in previous videos. You'll also want to pay attention to that lock icon that I've brought up before. So if I grab one of these corners here to scale this, I can currently stretch this text tall or wide. But if you don't want your text to get deformed when scaling, then I highly suggest locking that before you scale it so that you do not distort your letters of your text. That's particularly important with scripted fonts because it can get a little bit tricky um, seeing that, you know, making sure that your fonts haven't been stretched in a weird way. If you ever need to get back to editing your text again, then all you need to do is click over to that A icon while your text is selected on the screen or you can hover over your text and double click right inside there and it will change it to that text edit box and you'll be able to re-edit your font, your text on your screen there. You can rotate your text on the screen by clicking on it a second time and those rotation handles will appear and you will be able to rotate it to your preference. Okay, so the final and most important thing we need to understand about using text in Inkscape is before we could save this as an SVG document and upload it to our cutting machine software, we need to make sure our text has been converted to a path so that our cutting machine software can actually read it. If we were to save this file right now as is and try and upload it to like, let's say Cricut Design Space as an example, it would give us an error message that says this file contains text elements and cannot be uploaded. So it can't read text elements, it can read paths. So we need to convert this to a path by using path and object to path. So anytime you are satisfied with what you've typed out with your text and the font that you have chosen and you're good to go with those two things, you're gonna need to convert it to a path by just clicking on your text and then clicking on object to path. Before I do that, I wanna bring your attention to something on your screen that's gonna help you with that a lot. So right now I have my text selected. And if you look right underneath our color bar here, you will notice that it says text, ray done, bold, and then it gives me the size of it there. So that's giving me information about what is selected on my canvas. So I know that what is on my canvas right now, it's text, it's not a path. 
Now I'm going to go up to that path button and I'm going to click on object to path. You could also hold shift control C on your keyboard or shift command C if you're on a Mac. It looks like nothing happened, but in fact something did happen, the, a very important something happened. It changed it to a path, and if you look down here again, you will see that instead of saying text, it now says group of 23 objects. There are 23 letters, and now each letter is a path, which means each, each of these letters could be cut out in Cutting Machine software. Now, if we needed to edit the letters further, let's say we want to change them in some way, or we're going to use them to do a knockout design, which we're going to get to later, then we're going to need to be able to work with these letters even further. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to ungroup them. You can ungroup them by holding shift Control g on your keyboard, or you can right click and go to ungroup. I'm just going to right click and go to ungroup since I know y'all are very visual at this point, and you can refer to those printables for the shorthands of this anytime. Now you can see each one of our letters here is its own path. If we were to go over to that nodes tool that allows us to edit any object on our canvas, we will now see that each of these letters is able to be edited individually. So if I want to zoom in here, and let's say I want to adjust this for whatever reason, I want to start you know, shaping this letter differently, we can now do that. If we were to try and do that before we converted it to a path, it wouldn't exist. It, it, there are no nodes in text. So that is why it's so important to convert this to a path before you save it or do any further um, edits or project um, you know, applications to it. So let me undo that. Now, if we were to import this to cutting software right now, it would it would have all of these letters separate. It wouldn't actually have this as one solid grouped piece. Um, so there would be a W and an E and an A and an R because these are all individual. If you wanted it to stay exactly as it is right now, you could unite this together and it would basically be a welded image. Um, if you're familiar with welding text, which I would assume most of you are since you're taking this um, course, it would basically be a welded image, and instead of each of these letters um, being loaded individually, it would just load this whole phrase as one layer. Um, so if you're cur curious how to do that, and I'm going to walk you through lots and lots of examples of this later on, you would just select all of those letters after ungrouping it, and go up to Path, and down to Union. Then once you do that, all of our individual 23 letters are now one path, which we see down here underneath the color bar. It's now one path and it's all together and we could load it into our cutting software and all these letters would cut out and they would cut out just as they're shown here. It wouldn't separate them. It wouldn't jumble them up or anything like that. So that is the initial basics of working with text and the most critical pillars for success when working with text. If you want to learn how to fill in text and drawings using hatch fill patterns in Inkscape, go ahead and check out that video that is coming out tomorrow on my YouTube channel. That will be out and I'm going to link it below in the description once it has been released. See you there.